Hey, good morning everyone. It's Tractor Man 44 here. Hey, um, I'm in the middle of a project changing some uh, old, old wheels and tires off of that old 36 Chevrolet dump bed. I'm sure you guys, some of y'all might remember that old uh, dump trailer. Tires are all rotten and everything. I'm putting on some new tires. And they're obviously much, much bigger because they're contemporary tires and contemporary rims. Uh, they're damaged. They're ruined. They can no longer be put on the road, which makes them perfect for me. Uh, my much older brother, you know, gave them to me. I've, I've already converted the rims, but I'm mounting the tires now. And I don't know if you're like me, but I seem to have trouble sometimes with tubeless tires. Getting them to attach to the bead. Now, I've gone the routine with, with ether and everything. I've been successful with that a number of times. But now they're putting something. They've changed the composition of the ether to where it's not as explosive as it used to be. And it's a little more dangerous because you have to spray a little bit too much in there. And sometimes you set the tire on fire, you know, and uh, don't really like doing that. And sometimes you get a little more of an explosion than what you really want. But anyway, that's another story. What I'm doing is I'm mounting 22.5 inch over the road tractor and trailer truck tires on a 22 and a half inch rim. And with my normal little air compressor, I'm going, I'm having trouble getting the, get him to jump up on the bead. So I don't know what you all do in a case like that. What I'm going to do because I have the option and because I need such a such a much greater volume of air, is I went down the woods and hooked onto my old homemade sandblaster. You can see it, you can see it behind me. I'm not going to go into detail on that sandblaster now because I've got a video coming up where we really did some uh, a lot of sandblasting this summer. I've got a whole series of videos on that, and I, I highlight it a lot better then. But at any rate, it's got a two 80-gallon tanks on it. One's a 80-gallon tank for the sand. The other's 80-gallon tank for the air, and it's a it's a three-cylinder, two-stage compressor. Uh, it's got an intercooler and everything on it. It's got unloaders, the whole routine. And we run it off power takeoff off the tractors. Had to adjust the uh, RPMs, you know, by use of pulleys and everything, you know. So it, it's it's a pretty much of a trip. It's not for the faint of heart, let me tell you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to generate the, the, the pressure that I need in the volume that I need. And then I'm going to transfer that to the tube or to the tubeless tire. And if the amount of air I'm blowing into that tire exceeds the amount of air that's escaping through the bead that won't seat, I'm going to be successful. But if that doesn't happen, I ain't going to be successful. So let me show you what I've come up with to transfer the air and the pressure from inside the tank to inside the tire. Now everybody knows how sandblasters work. You have a mixture of air and sand that you mix through a, a, a series of valves underneath the tank in order to uh, get it to come out of your nozzle. Now what I've got here is a, a full one inch hose. It's about a 30 foot hose. And here's my nozzle that goes on here. It used to be a dead man valve, but I eliminated the dead man valve because it never seemed to work right because it would always plug up with sand. And here's my ceramic replaceable tip. What I do is I'll use these small tips until they erode out because the sand will lead them away. Then I save them once they get bigger, put them off side, then put another new smaller one in. Then I use the larger ones for Merrimack sand, which is a much larger granular sand than, than silica sand. And so what I've done, I've taken that dead man's valve off or the, the nozzle off. And I went to the junk pile. You know I've got uh, scrap material. And I got me about an 18, 20 inch piece of 1 inch black iron pipe. And I went to the scrap iron pile and pulled out some thin pieces of scrap steel, 3 16 plate, and just formulated this funny looking, uh, funny looking thing right here. And then if you take a look at the end of it, I've got a pinch down to where it goes out wide and narrow. That hopefully is going to set right there at an angle right at the point where the bead comes in contact with the rim and I should be able to open my blast valve and should be able to shoot a tremendous amount of air in all at one time while the normal compressor is pumping air into the normal valve stem. Like I said, I've got a video on converting this all over from the uh, 36 Chevrolet 5 lug center rims to the huge 22 and a half inch rims. I've got a whole video on that. That's going to be coming up. But uh, right now you can see what my issue is here. And I just cannot get enough air. What I'll be doing, I've got the stem taken out, the valve core taken out of this. And I've got a special fitting that I use for normal tires that you put on your air hose. And it will actually latch on. You can hear the air going in right there. It'll lock in place and it'll be funneling air in when I get ready to blow it on with my uh, larger piece of pipe. I hope. So if that pipe expands expands it rapidly enough, this should pick up and continue on and catch it from collapsing again. You notice the weight of these tires is just phenomenal. I've got it up in the air so I could jam down on it and seat the lower bead. 
So the lower bead should be halfway seated, so it shouldn't leak, but just minimal there. But up here at top, it's leaking all the way around the perimeter, and so I'm hoping to overcome that. We're going to find Hey, out. you know how I told you earlier that uh, I'd taken that sandblaster nozzle off the end of that 30-foot hose, and uh, I mistakenly said that that, that was a one-inch hose. It's in actuality a three-quarter inch hose. So um, as with all my projects, you know, you kind of think about things as you're progressing, and I made, a, made another change. What I've done is I've abandoned the idea of using that three-quarter inch hose, 30 foot long, because the pressure drop that's going to be in that hose by the time it leaves the tank, goes through my series of piping, bypasses the sand trap or the sand uh, tank, and goes straight into the, uh, the 30 foot hose, there's going to be a, a pretty substantial pressure drop by the time it gets out there. So what I've done, I've opted to make a quick change, coming right out of the tank where the high pressure is, it goes right into a cross. And I just put a cross on there so that I could power my charcoal filter and I have also a, a separate uh, air supply in case I needed to air up tires, this, that, or whatever. And then of course it comes up here to a, a, a relief valve. So what I've opted to do is abandon that 30 foot long 3 quarter inch and went with a full 1 inch. You can see physically the difference in size. And also made it a very short length. I've got about a, a 4 foot length of true 1 inch. And I made a couple of fittings to attach into it, the hose into, and then into over here. And I'm going to be able to build the tank pressure up, and I'll be able to pop it open like that. And I should have no pressure drop. I won't have the pressure drop through the entire hoses affecting what comes out the end of my little snoot. Uh, the only pressure drop I'm going to have is going to be coming through this three-quarter inch line. And we're going to see if that's going to uh, make it jump up on there. Hey, and if this don't work, we'll go do something else. Looks like it's uh, a little slow getting started. That's because that's a heck of a horse. It takes some, it takes some horsepower to move that compressor. You can see physically the uh, the size of it. Um, it makes a 30, 35 horsepower tractor really grunt. That's why it's nice to have this big boy on it. You've got enough to full RPM right there, about 540 RPM. And at that speed, I've got the uh, crankshaft on the compressor turning 960 RPM, and they want it or they recommend it turning. 1,000 RPMs or less to make sure that you don't uh, blow the oil out of the crankcase and down the discharge line and into your air air supply. Now here's where it, where it was kind of important for me to have a little bit of help that unfortunately I didn't uh, didn't have today. So um, okay, right there as soon as you saw me pull that trigger, uh, that bead jumped up on there and pinched my snoot in between the rim and the bead. And I had to wiggle and jiggle it for just a second to get it out. And whenever I got it jerked out, the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the pressure from the air was swapping my wand all over the place. I had a tough time getting it under control. And then in the meantime, of course, my pressure went down a little And I had to restart the situation again. But um, I'm going to make a little bit of a change to that snoot. And make it just to where I can push a little dipper up against the edge of the bead to hold that thing in place and push a lot harder. So, uh, now the second time it went ahead and jumped right on again, and I'm trying to keep enough pressure in it so I can get the valve force started. Um, I just had one devil of time. I really needed a little bit of help uh, <laughs> right there. But it doesn't matter. You know, all is well, it is well. We were successful. We got it to uh, set up on there. I didn't have to fight it all that hard. So right now I'm just shutting the tractor down. And we're going to uh, go ahead and, and you can hear the other, you can hear the air running out of the other compressor there. But uh, I'll go back and get that latched on and get the pressure up and make sure it stays on the bead and not have anything to worry about. As you can hear again, go ahead and put the, the, uh, the other air compressor back on.
Well, I tell you what, if I'd had a helper, you know, my son or my son-in-law here to monitor the tractor and the compressor, it would have taken the first time. I had a little bit of a problem because I couldn't get everything set down, everything shut down, set down, and the valve stem or the valve core back in the valve stem just right. So I suffered a little bit of uh, angst there. But, uh, you know, about the third try, you know, I managed to get it. So I'm really happy with it because there's no way my little compressor would fill this thing, would, would get this thing on the bead. And like I said, ether is always an option, but I like to use that as a last alternative. But anyway, here's what we started out with. Essentially, we had these uh, tin lug, and I went ahead and plasma torched those out. You saw, do, saw me do that, or you will see me do that. And then I cut the centers out of those 1936 Chevy rims, and then welded those centers in here so that I can put these 22 fives in place of the 20s on that old trailer. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I hope I get everything I need on video. Oh, hey, there's one thing I kind of noticed. Notice my gloves. It has an RLM on it. You know, I am apolitical. I didn't want anybody to see that and think that that's a BLM, you know what I mean? Like I said, I'm totally apolitical. I'll never tell you what side of the fence I'm on concerning anything concerning politics. But uh, I was on a job site one day and labor is sweeping stuff into a pile and there's a left-hand glove laying there. And I just picked it up and said, hey man, do you find a right-hand glove too? He said, no, that's the only one I found. I said, man, I'm going to go ahead and take that. I got a whole stack of them because when you're welding, I burn up my left hand gloves 10 times to 1 over my right hand glove because when I'm either stinging or um, using the MIG, especially on the MIG, I very seldom ever have a glove on my right hand. So this is the hand that I need to protect. So I wear those left hand gloves out a lot, like I said, 10 to 1, literally. And so I don't mind if I just find one glove. If it's a right hand glove, I turn it inside out and make a left hand glove out of it. If it's a left hand glove, that's okay too, you know what I mean? So at any rate, just thought I'd clarify that. That and about a dollar get you a cup of coffee somewhere, you know. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed that exercise. Um, we got the tire blown back on, you know, and, and it's set up. I put 120 pounds in both of them. I did not You have to use this for the other tire. It seat very, very easy, but it wasn't nearly as heavy a tire. Whenever it laid down on the side, it did not collapse in way off of the rim like that. This big old heavy one, man, it had so much meat on it, and it was so heavy, it just... It just would not even attempt to stay up where it needed to stay. Uh, so my small compressor lights it on. But uh, my small compressor, it's still a 20 CFM, the small one. Uh, it's like a five horse or eight horsepower, something like that. Uh, two, stro two stage, but uh, it just could not make this one up. So hope you all enjoyed that, that exercise. Just a brief Cliff Notes version, you know, on the sandblaster. It, it's going to get covered whenever I put up them sandblasting videos from this summer. But uh, it's kind of neat getting the old 88 out. It had been setting for too long. And, you know, it's like uh, anybody. You know, if you sometimes you retire and just sit down and watch television, you know, you don't, you don't last too long. So kind of thing, same way with these old tractors, you know. If they uh, just set too long, they, they just get to where they ain't, ain't too good. You know what I mean? So you got to fire them up and, you know, lubricate them up a little bit every now and then. Kind of like old bones. I guess you can tell in the meantime, my daughter come up and give me a bit of a haircut. You know, try, trying possibly futilely to make me a little more presentable. The haircut looks good, but the presentation is just the same, you know what I mean? So, hey, you know what? Thanks for watching, guys. This is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here.